Hello Art 173, welcome to the forums unit. We're going to learn how to interact with the user so that we can get information from them like the type of thing that you would type into an order like name, address, um, comments, credit card number, and things like that. Not real credit card numbers, but um, somewhere they can type that stuff in. Uh, so let's go to Unit 7 Forms and index.html is the one I want to open. And this is our example. It's a Carlos O'Leary's um, order form that we're going to make here. It's a pretty silly little thing. Um, but let's go to the very end of the document here and I'm going to add a carriage return or an open and close paragraph and then I'm going to insert a form. Insert form form. You want that to be the first thing you do every time you create a form here. It's just a simple insert form form so that gets the base element started up and everything that we're going to do is you want to make sure it goes inside that red box. Um, let's give it a nice name that something that makes sense. Let's call it um, order pizza and we'll give it an action and this action you're going to type it just like this slash cgi bin slash form dot cgi and on your method you want to use post that script that's being men mentioned there the, where it says action um, this is something that only exists on the artprogram.org. So if I load this into my browser and type in my information and click send, it's not actually going to generate the email that you will see when this user types in their information because this script doesn't exist on your hard drive. It only exists on the artprogram.org. So this has to be uploaded before it will actually generate the email. It will be functional in every other way, but <clears throat> until you upload it, it won't generate that email. And that, of course, assumes everything is right, so um, pay attention. All right, so <laughs> what we can do now is start inserting form elements and just make sure that they go inside this red box. So the easiest way might be to go to the insert menu and you could just start with a text field it comes along with a label and some properties the label we're gonna type name you'll notice that it's got that colon there that's sort of a cue to the user that they've got something that they can type into um, for the name of the text field we're gonna put name <laughs> which is redundant but it needs an ID for the script so you type this stuff in a few times um, for size let's make it 60 and the max length will make 60 and I think that'll do it alright so there's our name field and that max length that keeps the user from typing in any more than 60 characters. Uh, so I'm going to press enter and I'm going to insert another field for going to basically um, if we're going to take the user's order then we're going to basically need their their information, their telephone number and their address and I thought I clicked on that text field. There we go. So <clears throat> We need to get to their house, so we need their address. And for the name of this one, we'll call it address. And we'll give it a size of 60 and a max length of 60, and that'll be good. And on the third one, we're going to put in a tell field. This is a phone number field. And tell is kind of in a 
sort of br abbreviated way, it's kind of terse. It's um, sort of an abbrevi abbreviated way to say it. So <clears throat> I'm going to actually type in the words phone number so that the uh, user will be hopefully not too confused. And what this does that's different from a text field, the user just types into it, but um, and we make this size 10 for 10 digits and max length of 10, um, is that it tries to find something that looks sort of like a telephone number. And it warns the user if it isn't there. So that's a nice thing about, this is actually an HTML5 tag, this um, tell uh, input. So that's that's a pretty cool thing. You don't need any kind of special script to do the validation. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a return after that and what I'm going to do is the form's not done yet but I'm actually just going to put the end in right now and that might seem a little strange but it might be a good idea just to put in like two or three fields when you're doing this and then actually we'll put in the submit button and the reset button upload it and or add the uh, hidden fields we'll need to do that too and then upload it and test it out and see if it see if things are happening so click the submit button here and basically this is this comes pretty pre-made it's not something you have to mess with too much but <clears throat> um, in fact I think you don't need to change anything at all the only thing I would say is the word on the button that the user sees maybe could be something better than submit I, that's this uh, field right here where it says value and I, w I could see changing that to like place order I think that would make a little more sense to me and then <clears throat> I'm going to insert another button that will reset the form. It's called Reset Button. Okay, now there are a couple of hidden fields that have to be in this form for this Place Order button here to work, and it doesn't matter where you put them. I usually end up putting them at the end, but it, do, it has no bearing on the functionality. So, <clears throat> um, you're looking for where is it? There's a, a hidden field button. There it is. Just says hidden. And you want to click that. It's not giving me one. There we go. It's being a little weird. It's done this a couple of times. But at any rate, <clears throat> that's a hidden field now. It's in there. And what this script does is it looks for these hidden fields and you got to set a few parameters for the script to function. One of the parameters you have to set is the email address that you want the information to go to. So the first hidden field that we do we call it submit underscore to and you want to make sure that you capitalize it um, just like this which is to say no capitals at all. Um, none of these have any capitals in them. So uh, the, the names, none of the names have any capitals in them. The value is your email at your host.com obviously that's your actual email in there and that will almost be enough except you need to tell it one more thing um, that what I should say is that will almost be enough to make it function technically it's there's a little more you need for the um, assignment but we need to add at least one more hidden field <coughs> and Let's actually select it. And this one will be called data underscore order. <clears throat> and this tells it um, what fields to insert into that email. And it needs to know that. And also in what order. So we're going to do name, address, tell. Those are the only three on there right now. We're going to have to come back to this, and we're going to have to add the other fields. If you if you decide to do it this way, um, instead of just adding all your fields from top to bottom and then doing this this part at, at the bottom here, um, <clears throat> then 
you have to make sure that you type those all in the exact same way, including capitalization. If you're the kind of person who is um, prone to spelling errors or you know typos one way or another, I would just copy and paste it to make sure that you don't introduce any errors. Okay, and with these two hidden fields, the email should generate. Um, but we need one more thing to actually finish the assignment, and that is called the OK URL. So I'm going to add one more hidden field for now, and then we're going to call it OK underscore URL. And the OK URL needs to be an absolute URL to your thank you page. You might notice there's another file in here. It's called thank-u.html. Um, that's what this thing is. It's a file that basically says congratulations, your form went through, everything's happy, thank you for your order, it's all good. Um, so make the user feel good. Um, but in order to do that, we need to give it an explicit um, absolute URL because that's just what the script uses. So you have to type http colon slash slash the art program dot org and then I, I want to make sure I get this right so actually probably the easiest way to do this is to not type this in at all but to go to your page and just copy it out of there. What it would be is it would it would be in a subfolder called Assignment 7, probably, if you're following the structure. And you would have a file in there called thank-u.html. And if you type this in and press Enter, it should pop up, assuming you uploaded it. That would be, again, this file, the one that says thank you for your order. So that should be where you would see it. Um, and, you know, obviously your number isn't going to be VWeb 100, but, and if this isn't an online class, then it, some of these folders might be slightly different, but the point is you can just copy and paste that URL without having to deal with all that typing. So, let's paste that. There we go. That's what you're looking for in your OK URL. It should look like that, except obviously it's a link to yours, not that. There, This file will not be there, and even if it was, you'd be clicking on um, a completely different um, order, and then it would say, thank you for ordering this pizza. And it would be like, what? So... <clears throat> That is about what I would do, and then I would just upload it now. That's my suggestion. And just run this form through, put some information in there, click place order, and then wait a minute and see if it shows up in your email. And it can be tricky sometimes. It can be, uh, it can show up in spam depending on your, your spam filters and how sensitive they are. And it can be, sometimes it just takes a few minutes so if you don't see it in about 10 minutes after you've checked your spam filter then you probably oh it doesn't want the hyphens <laughs> then you probably have some kind of hiccup so when I click place order it should say I should see that thank you page but right now I won't because I'm I'm on my hard drive so like I said that that script doesn't exist. I'm actually going to get an error when I place order right now because I did a local preview. Remember what I said at the beginning. That script is not um, on my hard drive. It's on the artprogram.org. So you're going to get this thing. It's going to say, nope. I broke. So again, has to be live. Okay, so at this point I'm going to jump back a little bit and I'm going to start inserting a few of the remaining um, form elements that we're going to need to actually complete this form. So I'm going to press enter. 
Um, again, you can use a table for this if you if you would like, but um, it is a, an appropriate use of a table to put um, your form elements in the cells and columns, but um, just make sure the table goes inside the form element. That's this red box again. That part's very important. So um, I'm going to add another input field. I'm going to use the email input field. And this is great as is. I can just actually click the insert email field right here. And it's probably in pretty good shape already. Um, I would want to give it a max size of whatever. I don't know. 60 is probably more than enough to for any email. So <clears throat> again, this keeps um, bad guys from flooding your inbox with information and shutting down your server, which you don't need. So let's add another field. That's what this is going to be all about from here on out. Um, well, actually, let's add a um, checkbox. We're going to start with the toppings now. So I'm going to put an enter after that email. I'm going to type the word toppings and then I'm going to add a line, uh, line break. That's the shift return. And I'm going to insert that first checkbox. And let's see here. This one is going to be extra cheese. And let's name it EX cheese, and that will not be checked by default. That little checked, if this is, this just says whether it's checked by default or not. Um, usually not, unless at the end you've got this sort of one of those annoying little, would you like to subscribe to our crap? And then that's always clicked by default. You have to unclick it rather than click it. So that's what that's for. <clears throat> um, and let's see, value, just uh, I usually type in the same thing as the name. So you'll kind of figure out where these are getting inserted as you look at your email. So <clears throat> there's the um, actual thing, but this word where it says checkbox, this should probably say something more like extra cheese to make it <laughs> a little clearer to the user. Okay. And we'll just add another line break. That's again the shifted return. That's different than a regular return. I'm going to add another checkbox and we're going to make it, we're just going to do a couple. We're going to make this one ham value equals ham and then let's make the label say ham and we'll add another shift return one more checkbox and this one can say uh, mushrooms I'll call it mush for short the label, I'll call it mushrooms. Okay, so now the user can click around, you know, decide if they want extra cheese or ham or mushrooms or maybe just ham and mushrooms or maybe just ham and extra cheese or maybe just extra cheese. So that's that's what checkboxes are for. And we're going to add another thing in after that. Um, after the word mushrooms, I'm going to press enter, and let's add let's add a radio button group. And here's the basic difference between checkboxes and radio button groups. Um, if it's if it's mutually exclusive, the selections that they can make, then it should be a radio button group. Otherwise, it should be checkboxes. So that means, in other words, when you use a radio button group and you select something, it turns the others off. So something like size of the pizza. It can't be 
large ten in, or no, it's not a large, is it? Let's make it sixteen inches. Let's call that value large. So it can't be a large pizza and also a medium pizza. It can only be one or the other. That's what the radio button group is for. And let's add one more radio button. That will be a small 8 inch. And we'll just call it SM. Okay, so these values, these are what show up in your email. So you'll see size equals large, or size equals medium, or size equals SM. So click OK, and probably that could use a, um, a label in front of it so that the user knows. And let's go and just type in um, size colon shift return for the line break once again. And then at the end of that, I'm going to um, press return, and I'm going to add one more radio button group. And this one is going to be crust. Do we want it thin? Again, these are mutually exclusive selections. So you can't have a thin crust and a thick crust in the same pizza has to be one or the other. Thin, thick, or traditional. Click OK. And you've got your crusts. OK, one more thing that I want to talk about and that is the text area. Let's add that in. Text area, there it is. And this is like if your user has some kind of, you know, comments or some something they want to write. Now what this text area does is it just allows the user to type in a larger uh, area of text. So this is the type of thing where any comments or special directions or whatever the user might have, they can type that in there. Uh, let's name that comments. And we'll give that um, 10 rows and we'll give it 45 columns. So. On some of these fields, if you see this form, I it's good to associate it with the order pizza form. I'm going to go back and check on these. I'm not sure if I, yeah. I'm going to select these other inputs and make sure I, I got that. Okay. There's one. There's one. I think as long as they're inside the form, it doesn't matter whether that's there or not, but <clears throat> I'm the paranoid type. I just like it to be there. It just makes me feel better. So, I'm gonna, I think I missed that. I'm just going through all of these and adding it. I, I've done this before without it, um, without that form association being there, and I haven't had a problem. So, as long as it's inside the form, but I still like it to be there. Since <laughs> I'm looking at the option, I feel like it should be there. Anyway, um, let's actually uh, finish this up and I'm going to add a couple of more hidden fields, but first I got to find my hidden field that was the data order, and there it is. Um, the thing about this data order it now is, like I said before, we have to come back to this because it, it only has the name, address, and tell in there, and we've now got an email, not telemail, email. Telemail sounds like fun now. Um, and I do believe the next one is ex cheese ham mush. So got to put those in there. You have to make sure again to capitalize this the same way and spell it exactly the same way. Um, the next one was size and then crust and then comments. So that makes that'll make sure that all of that information shows up in this email. Okay, and 
and those two things don't change let's add another hidden field this one is optional if you don't want to use it you don't have to but it's these other hidden fields will kind of start helping you handle the um, data a little bit more elegantly so let's add that hidden field in there and refresh and choose the hidden field I'm not sure why it didn't add a line break in the code there that's interesting in the code view okay so the name of the hidden field is going to be required and this will cause whatever you type in here to be required so let's require them to give a name address and a telephone number so name address tell are the required fields now good idea to have those three pieces of information if you're trying to order a pizza so let's add another hidden field and this one is called submit by there we go submit by submit underscore by I should say and the value is going to be whatever email you want this to um, to have come from um, one thing you can do also is I'm doing this right. Um, the email, if you have an input called email, you could instead call the input submit underscore by. This is the one piece of the script if I'm if I'm doing this right type equals email we're not going to change that ID equals submit underscore by so this will actually when the user clicks submit it will put this into the submit by field and your email will instead of being from just a blank address if that works right it will actually be from an email address so um, that's kinda nice and it helps your spam filters out uh, depending on their sensitivity so that can actually this can, bit of code can actually go away okay so we have one more optional hidden field that I want to show and insert another hidden field <clears throat> this one is called form ID and what this is is basically this is going to be the subject line when your um, user submits this form and it shows up in your email. Um, this will make it. This will give it whatever subject line you want. So something like um, order for Carlos Pizza. I don't know. So every time you get a um, email generated by this form, it will be shown as order for Carlos Pizza in the subject line. This is another thing that helps with the spam filters and let's assign it the form order pizza. So um, so that's pretty much it. The form is basically done. The um, I'm just going to show a couple more things. The design just calls for a simple image. I'm going to insert the image here up at the top. Um, I'll probably, let's see, I'll insert it before that opening P tag, I think, and right after the form opens, and then, but before the opening P tag. Um, <clears throat> let's insert image, image, okay, and just for fun, I'm going to click on site root. I knew I was already there, but it's a good idea just to jump back to your site root when you are browsing for a file and let's go to unit 7 forms under graphics I'm gonna put in pizza order form and this I want it to float right and not take up any space here so um, you know, or you know what I mean is not take up any vertical space so I'm going to do that with an inline style uh, which I haven't used yet and like I said earlier there's right reasons for an inline style sometimes the 
in this instance, it's just a one-shot deal. It only appears in one place. We don't need to deal with it. So I'm just going to use a parameter on the IMG tag right at the end here. I just typed it in before the... Um, I'll go back here a little bit. Right before the tag closes, I'm just going to type the word style equals, and I'm going to do a double quote, or in other words, the shifted quote. And now I can just type start typing styles. So I'm just going to type float colon write semicolon, just like a normal CSS style. Double quote, and that's it. You don't actually need that last space, but it's just a um, cleanliness thing. And I'll refresh that. Um, and that's not actually what I wanted. I'm going to take the size of these two fields down a little bit because I didn't want this to be pushed down here. So I'm going to, you can have a max length that's higher than the size. That's pretty normal. And it'll just scroll beyond as the user's typing in their words. So I'm going to take the size of these two fields down to 40. And the email field apparently needs to be taken down as well. So this can now float right without a big problem. Um, and you can see why some people like to use t uh, tables to lay out their um, form because as you can see this is this can get a little bit um, out of line here. <clears throat> so that's really about it. Um, let's go to the CSS designer and I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Uh, I'm not going to rehash everything you need to know about everything you know about CSS already because you already know enough to do this. All you need to do is extrapolate at this point. But let's add a a selector for. Oops, I you know what I did is I uh, I think I added that to the wrong. I'm going to delete that. Make sure I've got the styles.css selected, and I will add a selector to style the form tag just to start with one example and just real quick show <clears throat> like for example if you wanted a background color for the form tag then you know we can do that so I think this is I think this is a pretty saturated red up here so if I wanted it to be a red background ay, 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 that doesn't look that great but um, Give it a more of a tan background, so it's not so out of control. All right, so so that's the styling the form tag, and you know anything that you want to target in here, you can just give it the ID that you want it to have. A lot of these already have it. As we were going along, we typed it in. So if I wanted to style this name field, I can target the ID name. Um, I can target the label tag and just style labels and as we all know um, everything that's in the parent tag in other words the form tag in this case will um, cascade down and everything that it all of its children will inherit that so I can say let's make the font Gil Sands and it's gonna be just fine with that type of stuff um, and if I actually am going to use a background color, I should probably change this image to to match. So again, these aren't necessarily examples of good design. I'm just showing you how to use the tools. Um, and from here, you can extrapolate into anything that you want to style with this. And if you're using the table method, then um, you can just use the styles that we learned in Unit 4. So at this point, what you would do is upload your page, and hopefully you've already uploaded it once and tested it, but um, like I said, I, I recommend testing it before you get all the way to the end of the assignment. It's kind of a bummer to get to the end of assi an assignment and realize something's broken, but if you get if that's where you are, you know, just let me know. We'll work it out, and we'll figure it out, and it won't be a big deal, but... Um, as long as you didn't procrastinate and we've got time to do so and you're contacting me in advance of the due date. Um, but other than that, just um, have at it and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.